All right, so hi everyone. We're doing a special radio gong tonight. What we're going to do is highlight out John Hine. Our friend Gackerel is with us tonight, which I'm so excited about because I feel like I haven't spoken to you in forever. Right? It has been. Well, I, I, I got to tell you guys, I listened to your one on one with you two like twice or three times. You have the chemistry of Jennifer Tilly and Gina Gershon and Bound. It was so good. <laughs> amazing. I'll take either. Uh, exactly. Uh, me too. You got an opening theme too, Gat, which I said Monique. I don't know if she has it. Yeah, it uh, wasn't, you know, I wasn't really sure if I was going to use a Gat Girl opening theme because this no, isn't John a homage, Hine yeah. kind of show. So I really wanted to start with these two fat fucks discussing their interest in fast food. And I do want to get into the fast food thing. I know there's a couple things we really wanted to talk about. I wanted to get into his website. I want to talk about why his wife is with him or anybody's with him. I want to discuss the blowjob king and just really how he came to be such an important integral part of the Stern show because, you know, it confounds all of us. So there's just no there's just no reason for it. Can you guys yeah. see these two disgusting animals right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, oh, God, look at Jason. It's like he's wearing a tent. <laughs> he is. This is what Jason looks like. He is a disgusting animal. So I thought we'd start this thing with these two incredibly horrible, uninspired, unintelligent, uninventive, unworthy Imagine John animals. John rolling his sleeves up for that shot. Like he's, he, he's, it's actually calculated. Right, so we can like, see the fleshy, hairy beast under the <laughs> <laughs> Those are such sexy forearms. He's got wrist cankles. Wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you okay. just coined a phrase. Nobody has said, ever said that. Isn't that crazy? Mine has wrinkles. 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 Jason's got wrinkles too. <laughs> he's got nankles. <laughs> it's like a neck just literally attaches to the skin underneath it. There's no collarbone. There's nothing. It's just All I have is like that little line where his chin's supposed to be. It's like, yeah, it almost looks like he had a tracheotomy. It actually looks like he got whiplash on the cyclone and has to wear one of those stupid human cones of shame. That white thing that you put around your neck. I really wanted to start with these two discussing their interest in fast food. Let's uh, and we can talk over this because really who cares what they have to say but let's let's just mock these two monsters and see where we go with it so what we're looking at right now is this jason kaplan john hine fast food history promo i guess is what this is you know john hine okay so i know he has less hair now and actually the front of his hair is kind of like a baby chick where it's just kind of like this fuzz where you can see the skin below it he is he really is in the vein of howard a huckster's huckster he is a pittsburgh sports fan that landed a completely disingenuous job to comment on new york sports a half hour night deep cable it's what the mets are on the, the mets are on he's a pittsburgh pirate fan masquerading as a mets fan i'm john hunt and i'm jason kaplan you've got the greatest fast food ever Woohoo! <laughs> 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 when something comes along and literally changes the game. One game changer to say. Look at this face. Look at what goes on here. Four set forehead high. <laughs> indentations on his head there. I mean, obviously they, they had to whip out the four steps for him. Stands out to me was the chicken McNugget. The uh, McNugget the chicken McNugget. Was a tremendous Look at these two. It really boosted the sales for the restaurant. Look <laughs> at Jason. Jason like is exactly sitting there waving his fat sauce. Oh, I'm a big fan. Jason has a head like a like a raisin on a toothpick on a watermelon. Like mm. <laughs> he just has this little weird, horribly, horribly malformed head on this gigantically tremendous body. I mean, he eats more meat seriously than Sonny's BBQ on a fucking Saturday night with all the shots that go there. It's <laughs> He's just true. he smokes like he has it on his Instagram. He, it's just all pictures of him and me. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I did research okay. before I knew we were gonna be talking shit about Heinz, so I did a deep dive on their Instagrams. <laughs> and like, Jason is just like my God, I, he he would be like one of the, the guy in Lord of the Flies who was happy. 
because he'd be like eating pig all the time, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's like the fat guy on Lost who never lost weight the entire time they were on the fucking island. This is who Jason is. And they invented the slider, basically, which is the tiny burgers. But these geniuses He's got those little sausage your little fingers. Jason's got like these little Vienna sausage fingers. There's no way. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> Wait, guys, back off. Is this a Jason Bash or a John Honda? <laughs> you know what? You fall into the, the rail. I know, I know. It's, there's there's going to be a lot of shrapnel, shrapnel. around, huh? This is a <laughs> duck. <laughs> I mean, I like criticize Jason yourself? just for putting himself out there with John Hine in public. He's, he really is asking for it. But he's he's going to be our he's going to be our ally a little bit in this because he goes after him. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not saying you can't make fun of him, but he's so, on. Actually, there's yeah. a fight over this. Jack in the Box and, and claims by the way. The first ones. Because John Hine literally has the order, personality of sludge left over window, after the Indonesian order. tsunami. So the There's path. no that's personality coming out on him right this second. He, he's an automata. He's a clown. I mean, you know, you want to get to this, but it's something Howard picked him for a reason. Because as shitty as Howard personality has become, the only one worse could be Hine. To, to make Howard look like he's some but why? great you know. I disagree, though. Everyone says that Hines is very mild-mannered, etc. He's milk toast. There's something sinister about John. Don't yeah, you? The, totally, totally. Yeah. He's always scheming. Yeah, he's like yep. Iago from Othello. He's always <laughs> scheming. <laughs> yep. Xavier has more of an idea of what, like, a number 19 with no pickles tastes like than this moron who orders a basic burger. Who in their right mind would give him, like, any kind of upfront money to make a book about fast food? Who died and made him an expert on fast food? Monique, I said this to you on the phone. It's like, tabulate, you have the book sales. I do. To, to read off his book sales and then to get additional book deals after that, you know, 65 books nationally. As of today, his average rank is 1,700,000. And then his all time sales are 691, and his 2018 sales are 72. So is it just to say, hey, I'm the pop off, or is it just to have that? If that's it. That's, it's just to have that little sentence under his name. So when he does TV shows or he gets lucky enough to be on some show pitching himself as an expert, he can sort of reference a book that he wrote. When he started off, he was under which agency again? Somehow he got, so after the, the Jump the Shark, which he stole from his roommate, mm-hmm. he got an agent. United Talent. And that's what still shows on his website, which is so ponderous. JohnHine.com for anybody who wants to go there and see the fluffy haired John <laughs> in a suit. And it's called, ready? Hindsight. Oh. I think he went, I think he transitioned to Buckwall. I think after he had become en- ensconced in probably 05, 06, as soon as he became, okay, mm-hmm. he's hosting this, mm-hmm. he's hosting the wrap up show. And this no, really I don't think so. Round I don't think so, because it still shows his agents as United Talent as of, 2000, as of December 18th, 2017. As I'm going through hindsight, um, the last time he posted on there was December 18, 2017. Basically, what he was talking about is he's so busy between the Stern show and his loudmouth show that he has no time whatsoever to catch up on TV. So he goes through a litany of different TV shows that he wants to watch, but he doesn't have the time anymore. They, they claim he hangs around and they call him a producer. So he's like producing segments. But I mean, I saw this, this bit of dirt on him and it's legit. And it was from that guy, a serious problem. It said, Hein actually hates the Stern show. He hates the content. I mean, if you look at it, what does that guy have? The, what Howard talks about, uh, the bulk of that show, the, 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 the Ronnie deviants and all the other bullshit. What does He's never called right? in on those shows. He has nothing to add to it because he's, he's so bland. Literally, he is like melted butter. Like he has no thought process that anybody cares to hear. And it shocks me how he was able to parlay whatever it was that he did before he got to the show into being full-time on that show. He was elevated because of that, Monique. He wasn't elevated for anything else other than he is that But why brand, him? Why him? No why him? For- There's also a theory that he became friends with Gary behind the scenes. As soon as, I mean, you could play that the first, I have his first appearance. 
So he had become friends with Gary behind the scenes, and he was they hired him to kind of. You said that you think he was interning at one point, so trying to learn the show pretty serious, like just like a glorified kind of. He'd never been on air, right? He didn't have yeah. a show. I don't understand how he was able to parlay that into actually being able to speak. And I was telling Gat this. That's exactly what he did to his roommate for Jump the Shark in Michigan. He took it and sort of said, oh, this guy's going nowhere. I'll take our idea and I have access to, like, the New York media and I'll push it as mine. And if he says anything, well, I'll just... How I'll just deny how it. How did mine. he have access to the New York media? How does he have access to anything? He's in fucking Michigan. Well, just being here, just being here, wherever his roommate is from, he's not going to care. Oh, it's some silly thing we did in college. So John Hahn's going to take it, not credit him, even though that dude actually created it. Right. Does John Hahn look like he's creating anything to you? Just in terms of just a cre- – he's an automaton. Automatons no, a, don't create shit. He's a glomer for sure. Right. I mean, there's nothing about in this original. So he's I mean, like the Zuckerberg of the Jump the Shark, basically. With yes, the Winkle that's, Boss a great, really that's a great comparison. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thing is, it shows a pattern behavior. There he was in or, college doing it. Or, then- or, I mean, even like Seinfeld would get credit for Seinfeld when it's Larry David who did it, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. His, his name is on it, his face is on it, but we all know that Larry David is the brains behind it. But at least Larry David gets something for it. This dude got nothing. So basically, John Hine goes to Michigan, and then <clears throat> after he graduates... Okay, let's go backwards just a little bit. So apparently he met his wife in freshman year, but oh. yet he claims to have had over 80 mm-hmm. blowjobs. This, this first year of college must have been just a, a whirlwind of blowjobs. I mean, How does that happen? How does that happen? I mean, my God. I could see like him pulling his pants down and hearing horror music and there being nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> like a little hole to pee out of. So, yeah. Yeah. I got it. He got, I got it. He got blown by the Fab Four from Michigan, not the five, but just four. So 20 times from Chris Weber, 20 times from Jalen Rose, 20 times from Jawan Howard, and 20 times from Jimmy Kim. Okay, Which, so then- you would think he spent more time in college than, than Tommy Boy or, or John Belushi. He, I mean, you have these people in your life who can't stop talking about college. So true. And it's 40 years ago. So like, what, true. What, what's the it's word like, get Pedantic. over yourself. When you live in the past like that, it actually stifles your ability to grow as a human being. So John goes in a van, apparently. You know, mm. and he loves to talk about this in the commencement speech across the country <laughs> performing. That's, that's un- I think we should play a little bit of his commencement speech so that people can understand how he wound up getting to the Stern show. And, you know, here we are thinking that he was doing the commencement speech for Michigan. And we're like, who would want John Hine as their commencement? But it was only for the communications department, just so <laughs> we're all aware of what he was actually doing. Here's the woman introducing him. By, by the way, just when you think he couldn't get more boring and just talk in college, he's actually a teetotal. He doesn't drink. Oh, are you <laughs> kidding? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it's, it's all that, right, all that frat boy and doesn't drink. He's calling it a diabetes thing. Oh, but, why, but, why would you, but why would you be able to just, like, eat buckets of ice cream and, mm. and, fa- and pound fast food five, like, you know, five times a day and not drink? Why, why would alcohol be more damaging than... A double Big Mac. Probably because of the two. It's the one. It's the one urge he can't. You know, he'd rather stuff his face with grease. Yeah, probably, yeah. They gave him a choice, right? Right. And he justifies not drinking. He's looking at right. Hundred really. percent. He'd rather do shots of gravy than yes. vodka. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way. It is now my great pleasure to introduce oh, our keynote speaker, John Heim. John graduated with a BA in communications and history from the University of Michigan in 1989. BS. John is a producer on the Howard Stern Show. First came on the scene when he coined the term Jump the Shark. Lies. He created the website Jump the Shark in 1997. He has appeared on numerous television and radio programs, been profiled in popular magazines and newspapers, and authored two best selling books. John hosts Fast Food Mania on the Discovery Channel, uh, Destination America, and the collectible show, for what it's worth, on VH1 Classic. Okay, had three shows. This was 2015. Three shows besides Stern that he was actually on, plus two books. There has to be a Buckwald component to this. Yeah, look at the body of work, though. It's just all so vapid. Like, it's like Beth's dog training book. There's really <laughs> nothing there. It's as light as air. There's, yeah. I mean, 
truly. Well, it, it doesn't bother him, Gat, that there is no demand for it. It doesn't bother him that nobody likes him. It doesn't bother him that there's absolutely nothing productive about it. But he'll just keep doing it. He's living proof of just like, I don't want you to follow your dreams. Stop. It doesn't help anybody. I don't <laughs> care what you want. I don't care. Stop. Oh. You know, like nothing he does benefits anybody. It's like you just – I don't want to know – what your aspirations? You just t- stop. you tell you tell me how many people in that audience actually heard of any of those shows before this Shirley MacLaine. I, I don't what? think Monique. I don't think they know what the Howard Stern show is. If you're a publisher, if you're isn't it, isn't the idea to sell and move books as many as you can? John, I Not don't know anymore. that that's. I don't think that's the point anymore. I think it's what, what, what does it do? It's about the social mean? media aspect of it. It's about promotion. It's that's, about everybody wants to be a talking head, yes. and they all look at this as their inroads of exactly. getting to be on like MSNBC exactly. or CNBC exactly. giving some pitch. It's part of the resume. That's it. Yeah, exactly. how, is it, how is it worth it for them to have people collaborate on a book with this guy? I don't care if it's an editor or a publisher or printing. And then to even put it to print, how do, who does that benefit <laughs> besides they can that? It, they can put it on their resume. It's all just yeah, if, It's a circle jerk of useless books that nobody yes. reads. And I can only go back to the Lisa G book, which is quite possibly one of the yeah. worst things ever written. The worst piece of shit ever Gary? written. Gary? Uh, Buckwald client, Fitzsimmons. I mean, it's all of them. It's you know what? Anybody. I got to be honest with you. I think that Gary's book was probably the most honest one out of the whole lot. John has been married to his college sweetheart, Debbie, for 24 years. His daughter, Emily, is about to become a Wolverine. Please join me in welcoming John Hine. Okay, stop. Look at those curls on his head there. What is that yeah. about? What, that little, uh, like, those little sweaty tendrils in the front there? <laughs> you know, he pushed it down like that. Exactly. <laughs> it looks like pubic hair is coming out of a horrible brown bikini. <laughs> that is an ugly, <laughs> ugly gown, too. Wow. John's like mess. shit brown. Older daughter, Rachel. She's a junior at Penn State, and we still do talk to her. <laughs> As they, as if he's messing up. And I'm telling you all this not just to justify while I'm standing up here, but to illustrate what Ann Arbor means to me and what it's going to mean to you. Your passion to succeed, to get that piece look at of all paper, the em- look at all the passion coming out of his. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to have following my passion. All right, here we go. Growing he's going to. I like to watch a lot of TV, eat fast food, listen to the Howard Stern show and talk about sports, and I made a good living doing all of that professionally. So that's my message. Watch sports on TV while eating fast food and listen to Howard. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so focused on the woman behind them, Mike. I'm half joking when I say this though. You want a career in communications and now is the time to follow your dreams. Look, I toured the country living out of a van for a year after I graduated, and everything turned out just fine. This is the time in your life when you can make bold choices and go for it. The spouse, the kids, the mortgage, car payments, and your own little white dog, maybe named Molly, that'll all come. Yeah, he, meanwhile, he married his... his, uh, his yeah, there's no risk. No, there's no, no risk. risk. Anywhere. He's not taking a risk. Talent plus persistence equals luck. Think about that equation. Look at the woman behind. Everyone sitting in this room has talent. She's amazing. Like she's got my full attention. (laughs) I'm not exactly Don Draper. No. No shit. It was the first of many no's that I would All right, so here goes his resume. 18-year-olds love Mad Men. Here goes his resume. (laughs) Don't let the no's discourage you. Turning you down will be their loss, not yours. And yes, Turn your frown upside down. And it will come. Write down the names of the people who say no and never forget them. Why? Vendetta. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> such a cunt. Think of Arya in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Cersei, Joffrey, the Hound. You'll cross paths later in life, and they'll get to see what they missed out on. And I'm not recommending you take a <laughs> oh, We all missed out, John. Moving on. And I feel so sorry for the missing out. At the agency, I reached out to TV production companies and performed in a comedy troupe in New York City on nights and weekends. I wouldn't let oh, my creative I pay for that passion video. die. Oh, oh man, it's got to be somebody has. so creative. Work fueled my dreams. So After creative. two years at the agency, I responded to a New York Times ad looking for a PR marketing manager at a, quote, irreverent test prep co. 
I sent an irreverent response to the irreverent test prep company, and the Princeton Review brought me in and hired me. Now, oh, that's when he was the SAT teacher? Yes, yes. And it didn't bring back fond memories of struggling to get the standardized test scores you need to get into this place, but I was surrounded by young, very bright, fun-loving, determined people, and I absolutely loved it. Lesson learned. Always try to surround yourself with people who are smarter, funnier, and just as passionate as you are. That's not, everyone's funnier than John. Everyone's fucking right. funnier than John. It's describing, please have a massive sense of entitlement. Please crowbar your no talent on the general public when they don't want it. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Just have a massive sense of entitlement. That's his speech. I thrust myself upon these I, I, Yeah. <laughs> you may not want me. You may think I suck. But, but I'm going to push myself on you anyway. At Princeton Review, I wrote a How Smart Are You quiz for Esquire magazine and with Oprah Winfrey. Oh, she wanted Oprah. to give a quiz to her live studio audience. So I stayed at the luxurious Omni Hotel where all guests of the Oprah Winfrey show stay. <laughs> uh, I'm myself a little bit. Cute two and a half men soundtrack. So with one person in the crowd just yelling out the correct answers and the crowd just agreeing. So afterwards I was escorted over to Oprah. How exciting said, hey, is this? John, I'm really sorry those people yelled out those answers. Oh, p- picture being a 20 year old Monique in the crowd. I know. I know. To Oprah Winfrey. We know who he is. How do you think they Oprah feel? Oprah Winfrey or Howard Stern treat anyone you meet like they're a regular person. They respect that, and they'll treat you the same. Right, see, that's his whole fucking go-to. Like, he tries to, with Howard especially, like, tries to, you know, just be very, like, blasé and very nonchalant and doesn't really care and, and really thinks that the fact that he treats him like he's uh, contemporary yeah, or yeah. that he's somebody that he not respects but doesn't have to bow down to or is scared of. Right basically like Gary is, which is the whole reason he ahems <coughs> all the time. That's his trick. That's what John Hine does. The same way. After all, we're all just people, although some might have a few more bucks in television exposure than others do. A few years and two kids later, I left the world of test prep to start my own computer training co, and I needed to teach people co. how to create a website. So I hearken back to my Michigan days. So the jump the shark thing. So he graduated in what? 1989, was it? And he didn't start the jump the shark thing until when? Like he decided that the jump the shark thing was going to be important like 10 years later. Like how did the, what's the story here? It's an awfully weird year to be developing internet stuff. Hmm. It's not, there was no internet. It's like the best. So what what is it for? He sold Jump the Shark in June of 2006. I think that there's some weird correlation between when he started Jump the Shark, when he sold Jump the Shark, and when he graduated. I think that there were years in between before he actually started the friggin' website. If you want to play the okay. him on Howard the first time, if it you, might... The phrase Jump the Shark was coined mm-hmm. in 1985 by John Hines' roommate at the University of Michigan. Ah. Okay. Right. And now he just said on this that he didn't start the Jump the Shark until 1996. See, Wikipedia says 1997. So 96, 97. So he took something that was 10 years old already at that point. Right. Yeah. And made it into a website. This He's he is the, uh, he's Facebook. He's, he's, he's the... Zuckerberg, yeah. But again, it's like if you and Xavier, you know, have this website and Xavier goes and sells it. And cuts you out 10 years from now. Yeah, that won't happen. What? The guy co created. He gets nothing for it. But that's the difference between having people in your life that you love and and know that are never going to fuck you and having a roommate that you basically stole from. I'd be really curious to know whether or not that guy ever came back into his life and said, dude, you actually stole our idea. One of the the back office radios, and I I wasn't able to call it because it was just too long to look through, but Jason Kaplan had said he is. Really? He is. He went on like a ray. He went on a tried to sue him, I think. And went on a ray. Wow. And that was, I think that's what led to Hein complaining to Marcy to kill that show. That's oh. one of the things, in addition to Brandano bitching and stuff. But so that was, yeah. Tell me a clip that you want me to play, babe. I think we should go to the origin of him on the show, I think, the first appearance. Mm-hmm. You think John still has his Jump the Shark money for selling the website? I mean, yes. it has to be gone by now, right? 
I know. I think he made a couple million. He might have kept it. Speaking of Jump the Shark, i got to get this guy in. This guy's name. This guy is the coolest guy. This guy's name is John Hines. You guys are going to love this. And you should go to his website, really jumpthesshark.com. Yeah, the whole fine. website yeah. is about, and I love this, it's about when TV shows go bad. Because you, you look at any of your favorite TV shows. Oh, there he is. Hey, John. There's my hero, John Hines, man. This yes, guy's got a great hey, gig going. Let now, me does he make it. a living with Jump the Shark? Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is kind of interesting. He started a website. You know, he's a goof like everyone does, right? Pretty much. Did you did you have a regular job? Yeah. What was your regular job? Uh, I'm a partner in a computer training company. Okay, so you know computers. The only guys about websites know because you got to maintain them. So John uh, is like a guy. Where do you live? Uh, out in Long Island, Woodbury. Oh, okay. So he's a Woodbury guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he lives on Long Island, and he starts a website trying to identify people vote. When did a TV show go bad? That's why Jump the Shark is the name of it because he figured out Happy Days with the Fonzie went bad. <laughs> When Fonzie tried to jump over a shark his with motorcycle. his motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, can it get any better than that? Yeah, that was the defining moment. <laughs> it Fonzie. was all downhill from there. So it became jumptheshark.com. Now you got like everybody going on there, everybody's voting and, and all that kind of stuff. But I love this website so much because all of it's so damn true. Now, here, I'll start with my notes. Here we go. Happy days I told you about. Jump the shark. And here's why. What was the defining moment? I think Annabella Shore looks unbelievable on that show. Annabella Skiora. Skiora, thank I think. you. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, go ahead. But when she came on... TV King doesn't even know how to pronounce people's fucking names. Uh, and and at the end of that show, chat live like with Annabella. Anymore. Come to the website, this and that. It started, you know? I mean, Sopranos is just... Such a great show for what it is, but when they turn up the hype machine on it, you know that you're in trouble. Yeah, the uh, Soprano soundtrack is coming out, exactly. and let me tell you something: it's an absolutely bizarre soundtrack. Yeah, they, this, they say this about um, they say this about Asperger, Aspergery automatons. And either of you guys, is that what they say about Asperger automatons? I, I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of Asperger automaton friends. <laughs> Have you noticed in the history of the show, in the hours and hours you've heard of Han, he's never actually laughed? No, I, I've never heard him laugh. Have, have you ever heard him laugh on a supposed comedy show? I don't think I've ever heard a, 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 at least no. a, even a chuckle at it. And I think the laugh is very forced. Like, it feels like it, he needs to Fred do Norris it laugh. and not that he wants yeah. to do it. Do you watch tons of TV? Because you seem to know every show. Not as much as I used to because right. I'm busy with the site. And with cable and stuff, it's difficult to keep up. So you're going to be ruined if you can't watch TV. You, this, is, this is like you're a couch potatoes job. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. You've got to increase the staff to two. You know? <laughs> and the thing is, you know, I mean, if you're, you're really passionate about the shows, but you know when it happens. You can tell you're watching your show and you're like, oh. <laughs> So I made a thread on the website saying taping the I Hate John Hines show tonight. A lot of people kind of jumped on the bandwagon of this. And of course, Beanie Mac, who loves this shit, he said the fact that Howard hardly ever busts his balls. And the one time they made a great parody song about Jan Hine, Howard damn near refuses to play it and constantly cuts it off. I'm referring to this classic. Here we go. He's a rich nerd because of TV yep. guy. John Hines now a freaking millionaire. He sold Jump the Shark, and you know what's funny? The great big dork now has fuck you money. He's a rich nerd, a rich nerd, yeah, he's a rich nerd. I'm reading, like, some of the comments right now as we're talking. It's like, that diabetic fuck. Can't wait till he loses a foot. You are 100% right, gay Howard. Beanie Mac also. Jan is up there with Howard in terms of being the most unlikable on the staff, 100%. I remember hearing recently JD revealed that Jan only gave him $200 for his wedding gift, which seemed awfully cheap for somebody who's a millionaire and is one of JD's best friends who's been working with him for like 15 years now. Yeah, you know, the only cheap. thing that is cheap, but the only thing I could say to that is that, you know, when you're not invited to a wedding, I think $200 is perfectly acceptable since you're not yeah. you know it's just a gift so okay i want to read some more things because of course i throw up this thread so shiny wig comes in and says i posted this a while back concerning the bj king hein is a creature that has no idea what a common man is capable of under pressure he relented and spit out a response that he perceived as normal 80 blowjobs 80 kisses would have been a wild boast for the build, for the balding <laughs> boar, but he was clueless. <laughs> he, he tried to be one of the guys and throw out a number of BJs, but he way overestimated what an average guy was capable of. In conclusion, Hein hooked up with one chick in his life, and he married her. 
Holy You're shit, exactly right, right shiny wig. As he admits in the speech at 18, his college sweetheart. There's no, there's no time for anything near that embellished, awful number he completely pulled out of his ass. It's like that scene from the 40-year-old virgin when they were asking him what breasts felt like, and he's like, like, bags of sand? <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, 80. <laughs> it's very, very similar to Robin running 18,000 fucking steps a day. You know that bitch isn't even doing 18 on her best fucking day, and that's only because she's walking to the fucking get her, like, drain her fucking piss bag. Wasn't there something about John Hines' wife? Didn't she participate in a show at some point? She did. She did. There's, called, there's something called the John Hines TV show. And was this that? was a, this was kind of a, it's not even a spinoff. He, he wasn't getting enough attention on Geek Time. So he spun off his, his part of Geek Time where he did like TV updates and kind of branched out. Him and JD hosted a show at like two o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday called John Hines TV Show. And so they had a female co-host, Jenny Hutt. And so, yeah, so she was there. That, that was her. His, his wife would fill in for Jenny Hutt every time she was out. So John Hines TV show. She's like a supposed TV addict as well. Yeah. Okay. So then there was an article about his wife. It was called Deborah Gann's Wiki, Facts About Radio Funny Man John Hines' Wife. Funny. So, <laughs> really? so they both went to Sayas at high school, just so you know. So. You know, that's a total Jewy Jewelstein fucking place. You know who else went there? Who? Uh, uh, Judd Apatow and Natalie Portman. Yeah, so, so okay, John Hine graduated from University of Michigan where he was part of the sketch comedy troupe Comedy Company and Just Kidding with John Glazer. He came up with the concept of his popular website, jumptheshark.com, when he was in college. It was also at University of Michigan where he met his future wife, Deborah Ellen Gans. Gans was born in 1967. She's 51 years old. She grew up in Woodbury, of course, uh, graduated from Sayas at Senior High School, uh, also a native of New York. They met 33 years ago at the Alice Crocker Lloyd Residence Hall during orientation when they were 17. He 100% never got 80. those fucking 80 blowjobs. There's when, just no when fucking... When this happen? Orientation, you get right. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they tied the knot in uh, 1991 and celebrated 27 years of marriage in 2018. Their parents and two daughters, Gant spent her junior year <laughs> studying in Israel, and Hine would send her letters to her dorm at Tel Aviv University. <laughs> Lists about things he likes about her. Here are the top ten things I like about you. <laughs> At least there's no ketchup stains on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was written on a fast food. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking Hein. So it's Dudley has uh, from our site has bullet points about John. Hein. Jan sucked up to Howard by getting every Apple product Howard did. Yes, hundred percent. Wow, that's interesting. Remember that he was trying to pass himself off as a tech expert. Yes. Road rages on people. Yet. If push comes to shove and the other drivers get out of Hein, Hein will turtle in a second. I pray every day that he would tailgate me so I could smash his punchable face in. Right. So they yeah. mentioned that the other day, actually, on the air. Man, maybe it was a month ago. Details are hazy at this point. That he is like a really aggressive driver. And yeah, he, he humble brags about it. I've heard this two or three times. And that he'll speed up on somebody in the left lane and flash his brights and, you know, really go up to their bumper so that they'll move over. I fucking hate people like him that are just like zigzagging their way through the fucking traffic. You know, and I, I could see well, Hein Dick doing that. I'm sure. Well, that's why, that's why I like motorcycle. That's why I respect the motorcycler. He's, he's zipping by. He might be annoying for about a second, but he's out of your life. He yeah. zips past you. He goes or he doesn't, he'll pass you on the right. He doesn't give a shit. And that's the most dangerous thing. Jason's right, as you'll find out in the clip we're going to play. He's right. He is a passive, aggressive asshole. That's from Back Office Radio. And that's, that's John Hyde and Will Murray, too, by the way, is in on this. Okay, let's see. And they explain, they explain the real John Hyde behind I, the scenes in the uh, back office, what their psychoanalyzation profile of him is. All right, I'm all over it. And uh, uh, John Hyde hasn't looked either one of us in the eye in about three days, I think. Uh, I don't think he's happy for our show, although he won't tell us. That no, it's a weird vibe from Johnny because, you know, he says all the right things. He's happy for us, but I just feel a lot of cold wind blowing from that side of the room, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. You know, like I said, he's a hard guy to read. No, he's not hard to read. He's uh, he's passive-aggressive with a capital P, and uh, <laughs> he has been passive-aggressive all week towards us. So yeah. Jason does a rant here. He names him Douche of the Week. And so he gives like a rant about why. 
uh, as we said in the opening of the show, been very, very passively aggressive about our radio show. He has not uh, had one nice word to say about it when he said it at all. And in fact, it's, it's gotten to the point where I, at least I feel that he's been trying to undermine us uh, by running to Tim and, and, and asking for things because we're getting them. And, and, and he's cornering me in the hall and he's asking me all sorts of loaded questions about the show. Jim in the hall and ask him all sorts of loaded questions. John. You already ruined the fast food show for me. Oh, no. You've already spun off uh, your own show off at Geek Time and make Geek Time that much harder to produce for me. Oh. And now you're trying to step over all over this show. Uh, here's my message to you as Douche of the Week. Stay out of my business. Stay out of my radio shows that I'm working on unless I'm working on them with you. And uh, if you're really a friend, as you claim you are, try and show a little support. We're a friend little support for the show. I know, Will, you went through this yourself when you were doing the chatter and John wasn't exactly the most supportive guy. Listen, like I said, he says you know all show, the Monique? right things. It's no. just a feeling you... I know. I don't know any of these shows. Stop, stop. That was interesting. Stop for a second. Very obscure show that lasted very, very little time. Robin hosted a show called The Chatter <laughs> on Howard 101, and I think it was on Thursday or Friday. It was, I think it was a two-hour show, and she tried to set it up like The View. But she would bring in these panelists and take on the topics of the day. Really? Like, and, who would be a panelist? Uh, yeah, and, and Will, I think, was her co-host. Yeah, from John. I mean, he did do a couple of things with Chatter where he was really shit on the show. And he yeah. goes, yeah, man, I, I love the show. I'm just, you know, just tooling around with you. But this. be real. You got angry. At one point, you got really I, I angry. I did get upset with him. And it, it bothered me because... His show, like you said, his show has nothing to do with our show. Right. And, and I try and be supportive. Listen, I don't watch a lot of television and all the rest of it, but I see that there's an audience for it yep. and that people like listening to it. And it, and John's way into it. Steve and John do a great job with it, and, they, and they're way into it. But that's no reason to, like, kind of shit on, on, on what we do. That's right. You know, It's I, not a competition. We're on the same team. I have my own problem with John's show, and it has nothing to do with the on-air content. It just has to do with the fact that I feel... Yeah, and I've said this on Howard's show before. They're kind of, you know, here. Wait, does John actually throw his two cents into this hole? Yeah, as soon as he's done and they go, do show of the week, then you'll hear John Hine run in okay. from the back. Post the TV segment on Geek Time, and, and I feel it, it takes away a little. That's my opinion. The TV show is fine in and of, it, uh, in and of itself. But let's remember, John Hine has an appetite. You guys think I'm fat. He has an <laughs> appetite that cannot be quenched. Oh. He hosts the wrap-up show, with the, which is the second most listened to show here at Sirius XM, uh, outside of Howard's show, obviously. Wrap-up show's a great show. And it is a brilliant show, and it is on Monday through Wednesday, it, it and John does an excellent job co-hosting that with Gary. He when hosts, he gets a word in. When he gets... <laughs> on Thursdays, he hosts the John Hine TV show. Again, if that's your cup of tea, it's a very good show for talking about television. On Friday, he hosts Geek Time. There is not a week day that he is not hosting a show on either Howard 100 or Howard 101, and yet he seems to be getting his little panties in an uproar. So I nominate John Hine as my douche of the week. We would love to hear from you out there. Call 888 Stern 101. Let us know. Oh, wait, hold on. Surprise one guess. Of douche of the week nominee. Entering the compound. Douche of I'm here to accept my award. Well, you no, 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 you're, win. Win. you're a nominee. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back later. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, no, I'll, I'll address what Jason had to say. First of all, thank you guys for your support as always. I know Will thinks I... There's this hidden agenda behind whatever I say, and I really don't mean it. When Not whatever I say. you say. Well, I'm behind a lot of my stuff. Yes. The show stuff, show related. Here's the thing. You guys have been acting so weird about this show. You've kept it secret. Yep. Like, you don't want to tell anybody what's going on. And with the chatter, like Will said, we were kind of, he was ragging on the TV show. I was ragging on the chatter. One day I got to him, and it was fine. And, and But I totally supported that show. And this show, mm. I think, I did. And this show, I think, is great. As for me, <laughs> it's no, a liar. I mean, it's great that you guys have a show. Would you like to know why we kept this so secret? You know, he's just, he's a, uh, a okay. Because speech. of you. Because we don't trust you, and we had to go Wait, into the green uh, room uh, to have all of our meetings. Why would you not trust me? What because all of a sudden, certain things we were saying in the office about our show were filtering to other people, and, you know, we were hearing things, and I don't quite frankly... What that, what, I don't understand what that means. What? What? What was being filtered? I, uh, Jim, uh, my, my Jim's issues, my first of all, I, I don't said, know if I'm allowed to well, say hold on. what I want to say. I, I, no, said, to, I, said, no. I said a private email. <laughs> I can't believe you weaseled your way, way under another show, <laughs> yes, by the way. Because yeah. so, yeah, I need more air time. And Jason, <laughs> I nominate you for douche oh, of the week. Oh, another you're nominee. Saying, <laughs> oh, oh, we. You're Only saying, the three of us can nominate you. You're saying way. I'm on the channels all the time? Dude, you've surpassed Shuli and me. What shows do I host? You're on. Besides your show, you, you're on. You come on. You're on Howard's show as a guest. Well, you're on wrap up as a so guest. So are you. So are you. you. 
I mean, as a guest, yeah. You, you did, I come down the wrap-up the, because you asked me to. You did the, you did the AGT wrap-up show. Mm -hmm. And you that's did, over. You produce Superfan, which you go on. You're on the air just as much as me, if not more. <laughs> okay. And, well, then I will host a... What well, year is this from? I was just going to say. I was just going to ask. I was telling you. You got to remember the context. This is 2012, 2013, and they're on their way out. All that shit's on. The Marcy era is, is very close to happening right. and getting things done. Right. And Tim... Is that segue from Tim to Marcy about to happen? And as that does, that goes away. It's one of the first things that goes away. I mean, how good would that show be if they were allowed to go after Howard? Oh, my God. They, but they couldn't. How they wouldn't. Would they be? wouldn't. They even wouldn't. Fred, even Fred. Even Fred. You can't shit where you eat. And let's say What's they got fired you? and they turned back <laughs> Office Radio into a podcast, which is really what we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> without, without the, uh, without the insider without knowledge. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me finish this. It's all feel that way. And, and if you think I'm... Hungry for more airtime and this and that. That's got nothing to do. I with think you're just hungry. It's about well, that. Actually well, you're definitely hungry for more airtime. Be honest. You yeah. are. You're you're trying to get more airtime right now, aren't you? No, not stop it. Stop. Okay. No, no, I that's came, not true. I asked Jim if you want me to come. Of course in. we do. And we want to. No, do no, that. I'm not talking about this. Joke. See, the guy's smooth. He said. By the way, he is the most humorless fucking douche known to mankind. Yeah. Like seriously, the closest thing to humor in that whole thing. He tried to amplify himself for three seconds. He just went, "No, Jason, you're the douche of the week." Right. And, then he went back and even to the Jason, mode. even Jason, in his meat sweat stupor, is a little bit more <laughs> lilty and happy. You know, John has zero. Way point better. zero Jason's happiness way on the air, in yeah. his fucking voice. Let's go back to Dudley's point by point thing, and then we'll come back to another clip. Go. Okay, hit, hit hit him with the hind. It's hilarious, <laughs> Mister No Energy at his best. Yeah, I sometimes horrible. wonder if there's a correlation to the hit him with the hind thing and him getting hired on these shows. Like it became like a the, the like you said like the agents pushing that catchphrase. John Hine wears sports teams T-shirts everywhere he goes. Yet I know he has no athletic talent whatsoever. I'm sure he just never played a sport in his life, or if he tried, he was sucky at it. So you see him like you know, anytime you used to see the. Uh, old Howard TV stuff yes. in the background. He'd be walking around with like a Washington Nationals shirt from, right. you know, 2004, with little rips in it and yeah. trying to, you know, like, look at me, I'm a sports so Yeah, it's some, there's something about him wearing it that bastardizes the whole thing. Yeah, totally. I agree. This, didn't Ralph and Lesbian Jan host Geek Time show early on? I'm sure it was so. Yeah, well, right. So John, yeah, we, we went over we John is the co-host and Ralph, and it's Ralph's creation and, and they needed John to somehow be this, like, you know, stable guidance and said, but he didn't have any business being there and other people could host it. Well, okay, we'll move on from that. John Hine doesn't drink, which makes me hate him even more. Yet he will abuse his diabetic bloated body with Dairy Queen. Absolutely. It was you yesterday that said he qualifies it by, like, how unfun he is. So that's his diabetes are his out in every situation. 100%. And the fact he that is. he doesn't drink, and I, you know, I hate to agree with the, you know, number one drinking coach on our forum about this, <laughs> but it, it really does make him actually more humorless. You know, it he's, does. he's definitely it, not fun at a fucking party. When we had Jim Florentine on, I told him one time I walked into the comedy cellar. I would pop in there once in a while and it was in New York or in Manhattan, certainly low, uh, the village. And I walk in and I see this gaggle of comedians, all of which you'd probably know. It was like Greg Fitzsimmons, who was actually there, Atel, uh, Jim Norton. It was just this circ hacky sack circle jerk of comedians. And they're all sitting there with like green tea and Diet Cokes. Right. And, it's, and I'm going, what happened? These guys are all like in their – they're really young. This the is why you know, comedy like, is dead. This is why comedy is dead. Right out. I walked right out. Nobody cares about comedy anymore. All right, I'm going to move on to another person, OCD like an mf -er. He says, that wife of John Hine can't possibly love him, right? She is in no way keeping that ass and stomach tight for John Hine. The producers on the sports show could not have hired John for his personality. Why does Howard send Gary and John to CES and the Super Bowl when they don't discuss anything about the conventions afterwards? It's so true. Maybe he needs somebody to police Marcy Turk if she's approving expenses for shit like that. They never well, air anything from the shows. Nothing. Uh, nothing. I know. I know. It's weird. You know, it's a weird thing. They trap. They fall into when it should be Howard that's doing this stuff. It should be Howard that's going to Super Bowl week, and it should be Howard himself going to Comic Con because oh, he's so burnt. He's not going to do that. Oh, he's too big. Why? Is it, they hired him for that? Do you know how many good yes? are out there and these things, how many great shows. My favorite shows in the history of the Stern Show are when he went to L.A. 
Not Vegas. Vegas shows were kind of like deviant and kind of I, – I just – something – there was some things about the Vegas shows I liked. But I liked when he went to L.A. and I, and they'd have guests you'd never heard before because it was on the West Coast. And those location shows were wild and you right. never knew who was going to drop in. Well, and that's what he should be doing. But they're doing it and he doesn't want to bring attention to it because he's threatened by it. Bradley Cooper Lady Gaga movie is opening this weekend. Fucking crickets. Yes. And then we also – I think we also have that new Tom Hardy movie that's opening. Right. Venom, oh, Venom. Venom also. Fucking crickets. You know? And so he, – He's had no guests, right? For a no. month, month today and yesterday? No. No, nobody. I, I, I haven't scanned the show you know, in full, but I know for a fact he's had no guests. Right, so you're playing with a little bit over a hundred days a year. You don't have ca- every day is Casual Friday to Howard. Like it's his version of Casual Friday. Like no guests. Like you don't have that option when you're getting three thousand dollars a minute and you have no content and, and your content is as shitty as it is. And you're only working with a little bit over a hundred days. You don't have. You don't get Casual Friday at that point. If I'm running serious, I'm putting a mandate to have every. And I'll, I'll say. Remember, I showed you the. Uh, one of the things I searched for was looking at the town halls they did because I want to see who Howard's not getting on as a guest and for whatever reason. And so I see Natalie Portman did a town hall uh, in June. Right? She, she, she so has says, no interest. He, in, who, she has no kill? interest in being on that fucking show. I, I'm sure she's big enough where Gary probably tried to petition her like a month in advance. So through May, this rant is from May. So they try to get the bigger, huge guests probably like in advance, and she probably gave him a hard no. And so, yeah, so he, that's as soon his... as Howard got word of the hard no, right. he, he just – That's his excuse to, to rip her a new but asshole. didn't say why. So that's the story of our friend John. Anything else we wanted to add in terms of audio clips? Ralph got suspicious of – Howard was having Hein on way too much, and Ralph couldn't quite understand what was going on here. So he calls in and he's like, what's with this guy? He's really boring. Why do you keep having him on? Yes, Ralph. Uh, first off, uh, John's a nice guy, but he's so dull on the air. Why? Uh, he had some... I don't it's this monotone voice. Well, and it, just, it just goes, you almost go to sleep when he talks. Well, coming from you, Ralph, that means a lot. Well, thank you. But anyway, <laughs> I, you know, he seems to have forgotten the premise of what Jump the Shark is. I mean, I, I thought it was not one... If some, a show is bad or something like that when it's just gotten de- it's been a good show and it's gotten desperate for an audience and it tries to pull off some sort of trick yeah, it's the mo- pandering it's the moment you know and, and that when a show is never going to be the same under. I mean that that was a good episode and they, they're not desperate for audience Ralph, it, it, Ralph. and they referenced that so many times it was a development of the character it just changed the character first of all it's got nothing to do the Apprentice is still great you didn't mention The Wire which is great The Wire is the best show on television well I didn't ask him everything and regarding the audience, that's not necessarily what we're talking about. So he has a half-hour wrap-up show, and then he has a half-hour on some sports New York show, right? Right. So right. He, he has a full hour's worth of actual work that he does on that show. What else does he do? As, well, now, so now all, this, all that, that the fast food mania shows, that, that's all done. All right, so I was going to end this show with your, you have a Gat Girl intro and closing. Yeah, so This was supposed to, yeah, I knew there was going to be a film where it was, it was supposed to be just to talk Gat Girl and it's her favorite theme song with her favorite character in television history and then the, <laughs> the, uh, the song to end it. Okay, so which one should I play? Should I play the intro just so she could hear it? Play the intro, what it would have been, yeah, yes. Okay, all right, here we go. Yes! (laughs) What is Uh, that? What is it? When I was younger... We, I can't remember all of them, but we made up lyrics to this song. What is it? Great. um, Introducing the (laughs) X-Men. They are very strong. They are all all mutants. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's great. (laughs) Okay, here comes your favorite character. My, my, don't you all look serious? And we've got company, too. That is rude. That's, that's the blob scene, Monique, we're talking about with Hyde. That's Hyde's stomach. That's Hyde's stomach. 
I have no idea what's going on. I'll give you a quick. This was the X Men animated series that debuted <sighs> in 1992, and yeah. Gap Girl and I are huge fans. And her favorite character is Rogue, who did appear in the movies played by uh, what's her name, Anna Paquin. Anna Paquin. Anna, that's that's her favorite. That's our <sighs> favorite animated series. You Gap, guys are Gap, you guys are series. so cute. Okay, yeah. and so um, all right, so I'm clearly going to end the show with Gat Girls ending um show commentary is there anything else we want to say about that that thing that thing that we've just been discussing for the last two hours no mammy's wasted enough of our time already <laughs> you are the most sapiens in your guts uh, <laughs> right so so um gat you know how much i love you thank you so much for participating in this johnny love you too um I, I got nothing else. I'm gonna play Gat's uh, outro right now, and let's see Thanks, what the guys. fuck. See what the fuck this is. Hello, Mr. Matthews and Radio Gunkers. This is George Feeney, certified public school teacher <laughs> from the suburbs of Philadelphia. I'm here to dedicate my favorite song to my favorite dyke, Gat Girl '69, <laughs> and my least favorite dyke, John Hine. This is Constant Craving by Katie Lang. <laughs> oh. uh, keep your head in the cloud, and your feet on the ground. And, and... By the way, this is one of the best CDs, this Katie Lang CD. Wait, what happened? <laughs> Thank you, John. That was um, phenomenal. You're getting so much better at the I, I, I can't believe you know another song besides that. Oh, oh my God. That is the best CD ever. Okay, I used to listen uh, to that she's religiously. Good. She's good, yeah. She's one of the most amazingly beautiful voices. I don't know what happened to her. I have she like this really, visual of her being like 400 yeah, pounds. Know, you know? She got hit by the music industry. She wasn't allowed to have a comeback. She probably, she probably has great stuff we've never heard that's dangling out there. I don't know. I see her as like some big fat hoe driving a fucking Harley, but I, I could be, I could be definitely wrong about that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for this. This was a great show. I appreciate everybody being here. Love you guys. And thank you everybody who um, gave us some commentary on the website. You can come visit us at com at the forums and uh, look for us all on Twitter. And I, I think that's it. Good night. Everybody, hello, Steve S. and hello Kitty for the clips. Yes, thank you so much. All right, thanks guys. I'll talk to you Bye, soon. Guys. Thanks, Mo. <laughs> talk to you. Thanks, Mo. We appreciate you too. Don't forget, we love you too, Mo. Be <laughs> nice. Go Chargers, Super Bowl, Rams, Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodbye. Thanks for hanging with us tonight. Please join us for any discussion at RadioGunk.com in the forum section. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter at RadioGunk. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to us and hit that little bell so that you know when we're going to have a new show. Thanks.